Okay, welcome everyone. Got a bit of a doozy today. Uh, man. Um, I do like to bring you guys high rated games, and that's what the people want. So uh, I'll be happy to do that today. And uh, not only that, but I get to bring you one which uh, I took. So um, yeah, I got first in this game, and it was quite interesting, so let's see what happened. Um, um, all players rated over 2300. In fact, I'm the straggler. I'm the one who's not um, not even close to 2400 yet. Though I'm moving my way up. I think I'm um, about rank 65 or so now on the ladder. And... Um, Pretty fast opening. Um, I did have a nice advantage being red. Nice little starting bonus there. Um, people often ask, why don't you take this pawn? And in fact, I could take this pawn, but it would be quite risky for a few reasons. Um, first of all, uh, blue could immediately tempo the bishop and green could also respond with a move like this, threatening my pawn. So I'd immediately have to bring the bishop back to this square. And then I've spent two moves, and and uh, blue and green have played developing moves, and I think it's it's quite slow um, for this type of game. So I think that would be a little bit too slow. And blue brings the knight out to a nice square. Uh, there are always threats of moving the knight here. That's something that you know can give me a headache whenever I'm thinking about what green can do. Blue can almost move here immediately with the threat of green pushing the pawn. Um, and then I wouldn't be able to take either one. If I take the knight, I lose the queen. If I take the pawn, I lose the rook here. So I'd have to like, you know, immediately go and defend myself. Um, actually, there'd be really no way to defend myself at that point. So at this point, I'm already thinking this is a little bit of a bad square for the queen. And so I moved the queen to this square, which will have um, pretty good prospects in the future. Um, I'm covering these knight jumps, and green doesn't have a way to attack me, so looks good. And blue moves there, gets the queen out. Green's queen is not out, which is nice. And I tuck the knight away on this square, covers my king pawn, or rather my I guess I2 pawn here. And like I mentioned before, over here I have threats later of um, attacking green because uh, I move right after green, so this is a bit of a headache for him. And we get an attack on blue's queen, but I don't really have a good way to follow that up, so um, I do a very quick development of the bishop. Um, so I'm attacking this knight, and so blue's gonna have to move the queen away. I'm not gonna take this knight immediately, but um, I felt this pawn push was pretty strong because it also helps to block off this diagonal later. It's a pretty efficient move. And now um, blue does have some threats here, but I already have a knight covering that, so I'm not too worried about it. And yellow also takes a nice development square, as well as covering this pawn from the double attack. Um, this move is possible now, but I don't think blue has a good follow-up. So yeah, yellow is saving this move in reserve for later. And green decides to attack my pawn here, so I do a bit of a quick development move again and bring the bishop here. This is usually not optimal because I'm now not covering this square, so I'll have to spend a move and go back and protect that. But I thought in this case it would be worth it. Okay, blue's queen, or yeah, yellow's queen gets attacked. And now yellow moves it with tempo, attacking this pawn, which is nice. Um, but blue's probably gonna have a move to defend and attack at the same time. Now, <clears throat> while blue does have that move to defend and attack at the same time, um, 
this is also free, right? And we can get a, we can get an attack started on blue now. So blue does do that move, defend an attack, and yellow covers this. Green attacks the queen, and now I did defend. So since a couple attacks were happening on yellow, I did decide to give up that bishop. But um, as we'll see, blue doesn't even think it's fast enough to go ahead and take this. I actually think he should have. Um, it does eliminate it from the board and gives you an option to develop the bishop. Um, but as we'll see, blue preferred to attack yellow more violently. But this did give yellow an opportunity here. So now um, this bishop's under attack. So now blue is sort of overworked. He needs to follow up and attack this knight. He needs to defend this bishop, and he needs to capture this red bishop. And he can't accomplish all of that. Um, if green goes hyper aggressive, he might be able to do two out of those three things um, when we have to deal with green's moves. So green does start attacking here. And um, my best move was to get the bishop out of the way and prepare a check. It's better than taking this pawn because blue would love to develop the bishop anyway at the same time. So, um, well. Blue still has two things to do over here, and he's dealing with the check now, so yellow says, all right, fine. Um, I'm just going to move my rook. And this capture is not all that dangerous. He would just simply recapture. Okay, and now there's a threat of checkmate on my king. Or at least it's almost checkmate. Um, it would probably lead to checkmate. So I did spend move defending that. Also puts the bishop on a better square. And now blue goes back and defends. However, um, however, yellow can immediately just take this. And um, he decided not to do that because, you know, if you take this, then you're sort of beholden, or I'm sort of beholden to take this later. And then green could come in with some checks type things. Um, so he didn't want to do that. He wanted to simply take this pawn first, but now there's still a threat of double check here. And I decided to take out the knight first. So if I did, for example, check here, then... Oh, actually, no, I can't do it yet. I have to wait for yellow. That's right. So I just... Um, Green decided he's going to try to annoy me, but he should have waited for another round cycle because now I can just take this ahead of time. And if green takes back, then I will take the rook. Okay, yellow went for the attack now. Check. Um, now might be a good time for green to consider taking with the pawn and giving up his rook, but that's a lot to give up to defend your to defend your cross player. Um, it might have worked out though. I would I will say that may have worked out for green to simply capture that with the pawn. Okay, but he captures with the queen, and then I get to continue attacking, and that's a checkmate. Okay. So this was basically the only way to stop me from doing so. Um, I still might have gone for the mate, but then green would definitely get my queen off. That would be a huge boon to green. And if I had decided to go for the rook, well, then blue would still be in the game, and this yellow queen would be gone. So there's a, a lot of trade-offs either way. Um, <clears throat> I think... Yellow's position is somewhat salvageable, like he's not dead yet, so I think I would probably take the rook and call it a day. So this would be this would be hurting Green's chances a lot of winning, but it would keep blue in the game. So kind of have to weigh that against the alternatives. Okay, so yellow does the traditional thing and takes my bishop. And now once you enter the three-player stage, well, it's every man for himself. And teaming is simply based upon a few things. Um, material and uh, points. And position, of course. So um, as you can see, since we killed blue, that's good for me. Uh, I got the points. I mean, it's not always good to have the points. Sometimes you get attacked because you have the points. 
but I'm also looking at a nice, um, nice head start here with the pawns to go promote. And um, okay, I thought I would get a little bit more developed first. And it does look like I'll have to leave my king in the center of this game. Not going to be easy to castle queenside. In fact, I want my rook over here um, to protect the pawn. So, and specifically, well, I think this is a bit of a weak move. Um, but I did see this bishop could come to this diagonal, and I didn't want to have too many pieces on the diagonal. Um, so it's, it's sort of good to have yourself in a nice position and then start pushing the pawns. Uh, but this could, did give time to get yellow started. And as you can see, I won move too late. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yellow didn't push there. So yellow let me promote. And this is an interesting part of the game. I didn't expect yellow to let me promote. But he did. And then, well, I had to get my queen out of the way. I suppose I could have taken here. Um, but if I take here, he's pushing anyway, and um, and yellow will probably violently react to that. Um, so I just stored my queen away in a safe place. And there's really no way to stop for me to stop yellow from promoting now, so yellow also promoted. I just got my queens out of the way. And so that's a, that's a good exchange for us to both get an extra queen while green uh, accomplished nothing during that time. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. It's, a, it's a, overall a good thing for us both to be queening. And yellow started pushing the next pawn, so I thought, well, okay, it's probably a time for me to start pushing the next pawn. And okay, here, yellow backed off and was actually attacking me here. And so I decided to push here. I decided if green takes here, then I'm going to take with check and then recapture the pawn later. That would do a couple things for me. First of all, that would make yellow look uh, very material heavy, and green wouldn't really want to uh, side with yellow because then as soon as they killed me, the point leader, well, he would immediately get smashed. So um, green, I sort of agreed with me and didn't want this to happen. So he decided to just push the pawn. Um, this is a nice result for green and I because, well, we're not, fighting each other, we're not having to trade those pieces. And so I decided not to mess with that either. Um, similar stories for when he does the bishop here, I will simply take it. And then green will take back and I will claim, okay, yellow is ahead on material, we have to deal with yellow. Okay, and then yellow and I both stopped here. <clears throat> So no one's going to be promoting there uh, a fourth queen, or third queen rather. And so this is um, a bit of a tough situation. It's like, what do you do now? Um, first of all, I tried to get my pieces on better squares. I was very happy with the fact that my king was safe over here, at least for now. Um, if we're talking about king safety, all three, all three kings are relatively safe. So this is a pretty high level game where there are a lot of queens, but um, no one can really die immediately. Um, right, so yellow wanted to protect this extra barrier pawn. That's important for the end games. And green decides to push this and start an attack on yellow, which is beautiful. We love to see that. Um, yeah, I just decided to open up this bishop diagonal. Since uh, since this diagonal is not so useful anymore, I thought I'd move it up a little bit. And anytime this push happens, I was planning to take with the uh, H-pawn. <clears throat> and I'd be able to cover myself. Okay. So yellow defends there. And now green is um, attacking. And uh, I think this is probably the biggest mistake I made this game. Um, I completely didn't see that I could just take green's queen here. And that might have been a good idea. Um, well, it's weird because it would definitely be good on points. It would definitely be good to lower green status. But I would immediately get teamed. And I would get teamed hard. Um, but as it turns out, I didn't even see that the queen was, was being attacked. Um, no one would expect green to 
just hang a queen, and I thought he was simply attacking yellow, and it had nothing to do with me, so I went about my own business, moving my king, and then green, uh, green had the option to take my queen, and in fact his queen was attacked, but he still did not do that, which is very interesting. I thought green would certainly uh, take this queen off for my mistake, but green decided not to take that either. Um, why would green not take that? Well, I think um, I think green is a little bit being a little bit too patient here. Um, he is behind in material, and um, and I should I should be the one who's attacked anyway, because I'm the point leader. So I don't think yellow would have any problem with green taking that. And um, well, it's not like it's not like yellow would team up with me to kill green if he did that. It's not like we would team on him. Um, yellow would be perfectly fine just letting us us fight it out if we if we wanted to do so, and he would continue promoting and developing. So I think Green should have taken me, but if I had taken him, it would be a, would have been a slightly different story. Um, with the nine points and all, it would just be too much. So okay. So I didn't know what to do now. I, I after after Green moved that queen, I did see yeah okay he could have we could have taken each other that whole time. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so I just moved back again, and yellow was able to take this green pawn off. Um, so yellow's getting a little bit more control over this area, and I decided this would be a good square for the queen for now, and yellow decided to capture that pawn. Um, I could have protected it like this, but then green could attack anyway, so I didn't think that was going to be easy to protect. And so with this queen move, I could have also like back the queen up to here, but um, I think it's not, a, not an easy place to mount my defense. Now, the one thing this does do is now I was hoping green would block this off and sort of trap yellow zerk in here. Um, but it said green decided to sort of start coming for me, which is bad. And um, but importantly, there are no checks. There's never there's never any checks yet in this position. So, so yellow just started to come in like this, and I came here. So now, if green attacks me, then I won't be attacking yellow. So green just um, takes a move off and says, "Yeah, continue your attack on yellow. That was good." Um, Yellow is, of course, defending this pawn. Green also doesn't see any concrete ways to to meet me. I can always start to run away with the king a little bit. I have some space left once these mm -hmm. once some of these sacrifices happen. So it's not so it's not so clear cut to meet me yet. And uh, clearly, one or more of the remaining players would have to sacrifice at least you know combine like two three pieces in order to just finish me off. Um, and so any player who decided to do that would be too far behind to um, to win the game and uh, a forest green with you know one fewer queen is not going to be the one to start that so okay I back this queen up because there's no way to attack this anymore and I was thinking okay maybe I need to get on this this square later <clears throat> Um, but it also gives an extra defense to this and this, which is nice. And, okay, yellow moves this knight in, attacking the green queen. But now the yellow knight's attacked. And I moved here. Sort of waiting to see how this would play itself out. Okay, yellow moved in like this, so yellow is hoping that green will start to take my pieces off or start to sacrifice. Green indeed did do that. And I decided to cash in for this knight. Of course, now if green takes here, which is not what happened. Oh, no, sorry. Green did take there. Um, if green takes here, well, with the combination of yellow's rook move, it's a little bit dicey. Um, and if I take with this knight, uh, it's actually going to be a mate because then um, yellow will check. Green will protect one extra time. I will take... And then when it comes back around to green's turn, he will take with checkmate. So I had to take with the queen. And then this happened. And despite all of that teaming and me losing a bunch of material, um, let's check what happened after that. So um, they both sacrificed some material. 
they got something back. They got my queen, uh, my nine point queen. Uh, I got to take a lot of pieces, so I got some points. And in the end, well, we can see that the material balance has gone over to um, both of these players. I, I'm no longer really a material contender. But at the same time, I can't be mated it, um, immediately either. So it means, it means I'm still in the game. It means I'm not a target for a little while here. Okay. And um, yellow, I think yellow cashed in a little bit too soon here. Basically, yellow with this move is saying, okay, I'm taking green's queen off. Green won't be able to checkmate me now. And, um, well, certainly certainly the alliance is over. Um, but uh, there's one extra benefit here for me, which was I got to take this pawn off, which was very dangerous. Um, so if yellow was trying to establish control over the game with that move, um, taking green's queen off, it would be important to be able to back it up with um, some quick promotions or some some kind of attack, but it wasn't really available. And um, here I just decided to move back, um, protect myself. I didn't want this pawn to be pushed. I didn't think this pawn would ever be able to be defended in the even in the near term. So um, better just to stabilize my position and um, give it up. Okay, and then get my king out of, or a little bit more out of danger, and get the knight to this square. So it's a full blockade here um, with my queen and knight. And now I'm just happy to, happy to see what happens with green and yellow. Obviously they're gonna be fighting over making queens here in a few moves. So if I can position my pieces optimally for that, um, there's some there's some extra benefits here. So now I'm giving green the option. Well, green, you can just move out of the way, and I'll go ahead and check yellow and uh, take a rook, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I did check yellow. Um, however, after green moved this pawn, um, I thought it would be a little bit too easy. After after taking this rook, I thought it'd be a little bit too easy for um, the attack to come down on me, and I decided to. I also thought my rook would never get be able to get back on defense. So, for example, if I take this way, then this rook's coming, and there's going to be a lot of check and check. So I decided to come back and take this pawn, which is also a very valuable pawn to take. Um, and I'm threatening a few more things here. Um, so green wasn't too happy with that. Um, green did open up this this file so that I could start attacking yellow, and then he he had his own piece taken for it. Um, so green wasn't too happy. He attacks the queen now. Um, I back up, and yellow takes another green pawn off. So basically, we've averted any situation where green's going to be promoting in the near term, and um, that's nice. And now there's um, some small attack on yellow here. Okay, and yellow keeps attacking, green promotes, I took this pawn, and now this is pretty crazy because there's possibilities for yellow to take this, there's possibilities for green to check me um, by this diagonal, um, but my pieces are all protecting each other, so provided there's no like check into check, then it should be not too bad. I'm also holding a check on yellow. So basically, if yellow doesn't take this queen, there's a lot of bad things that could happen to him as well um, with combination checks. So yellow is sort of has to take this right now. And since yellow and I are very close on points now, there's really no reason to favor attacking me over yellow. If green just basically holds his own and gets gets two kings at the end, basically wins the end game, and gets two kings, then he'll get the he'll get the forty points, and he'll be able to recover. So, um, right now, since Cielo still has more points and a better position, or not more points, but more pieces and a better position than me, um, it stands to reason that uh, Green would not be biased either way, and he would be willing to go ahead and work with whoever he needs to. All right, I got my rook 
out of there. And now it's a little bit more flexible in this square. Um, again, I don't want to just randomly give it up for this bishop. That's not a good trade. Um, but yellow does go ahead and protect the diagonal anyway. And there's the check, but it's a check from green. So it's not life-threatening. Life um, and there's always a check here, but okay, after the yellow check, there's no follow-up check from green. There could be, you know, check and then green moves here and then I take a rook and green takes the queen later. But then basically it's yellow giving up a rook in order for green to take a queen. I'd still have two rooks. I wouldn't be mated. And uh, it's not a good trade for yellow. So yellow just attacks the rook simply. Um, and at this point I thought I had uh, a bit of a bad position. And um, my dark squares are becoming very weak around the king. And this rook, it's not easy to attack right now since a lot of pieces are attacking me. So I thought it would be best to take off some of the threat. And okay, yellow goes ahead and checks first. And green checks yellow. So it's quite interesting how that turned out. Um, because now I protect here. Yellow moves away and green takes that bishop. And now I sort of have a choice. I could save this rook, or I could take this green rook. I decided to take the green rook. Um, I don't have a good explanation for that. It just felt intuitively right. Felt like I had another attack on green. Um, it felt like at that point, if I took this rook, green would never be able to harm me again. And it's very important to have only one player be able to harm you at a time. Um, so this rook for me was very dangerous and my rook wasn't getting much done. Um, so it'd be either, you know, a retreat and then a lot of these other pieces would still be active. Um, I, now I do have a little bit more of a point lead, you know. So I thought this would be a good trade. And um, it turns out this is an okay position. Not easy to defend, but I'm also not immediately dead. Of course, it goes without saying that at any point, if both players decide that I need to die, um, then I will die. But um, that will certainly cause one of those players to put themselves in a worse position for the ensuing <clears throat> two-player endgame. Okay. Um, so now yellow, okay, he sees I'm the point leader. Um, it's better, or it's more dangerous to be the point leader when there's more pieces traded off because there's sort of less opportunity for comebacks. So when you're with the point leader with fewer pieces on the board, it's a little bit more hairy. Um, people take note of that. And I decided, well, I can't, or I could move back and prevent this check. But I thought I, would want, I wanted to swing the queen over and um, start attacking a little bit as well. And then um, this was nice to see. I suppose it could have happened that um, I got checked here and green took something or I started an attack on my rook or my knight. But instead we saw um, a capture here. This basically freezes the rest of green's pieces. So similar to how I traded off a rook for one of yellow's bishops, um, yellow is trading off a rook for this bishop. And now this piece is frozen. This piece is tied to the king's defense. Our queens can check whenever we want. So uh, now at this point, it's really tough for green to um, do anything. It's even tough to just find moves. Um, and so I, I get dodged out of the checks from yellow. And so yellow wanted to make some profit on me now. And um, <clears throat> right, of course, I could have taken here, but then... Actually, in this position, I may have made a mistake by not taking there. 
Um, I thought green would have something to do about that, but not really actually. So I was over protecting checks there, I think. Um, but of course, if yellow had two checks in a row, like if I took here and there were somehow two forced checks from yellow, maybe if he checked here, there would be two forced checks. It would be straight. It would be difficult, but if green could basically get two moves to get the rook in the action, it would be a problem. Okay. But um, basically, I'm just setting up for the end game here, and I'm checked. And actually, it turns out. Yeah, so this sequence was not too good, moving the rook twice and then losing this knight. Um, if I bring the knight back, I believe blue would, uh, green would come in and this would be uh, them capturing the knight anyway, so... So I just decided to get out of dodge. And um, really now it's anyone's game. Uh, mainly me and yellow, but green could even win this if our greens end up getting exchanged. Um, right. This is interesting. Uh, green got a double check for five points here. I'm not sure why it's five points. I thought double checks were usually two points. I'll have to go back and check on that, but that was a lot of points to get for the double check. Um, I'm slowly crawling forward, and here, look, I got a double check and it was two points. So I don't know if it's because one of those double checks was discovered or what, but that's that's a bit strange. If someone knows the answer to that, let me know because let's just go back and check it again. Right, looking at Green's points, he's got 22 and then 27 after the double check, and he didn't take any pieces. And then a couple moves later, um, I got a, a double check. Actually, no, mine was worth one point, right? Mine was worth one point because I took a pawn with it and then there was double check. So, um, I don't know, maybe it's because one was discovered check, but that seems very arbitrary and obtuse in terms of ruling. Or not uh, not obtuse, but, uh, um, what's the word? Obscure, no. Um, basically something that's, that's hard to have known ahead of time. A little bit of a black box there for what the rules actually are in this game. Okay, and so I'm protecting the pawn. I'm slowly starting to move forward. Um, I give a check on yellow. Green's check is not too dangerous, but yellow's checks are pretty dangerous, so I thought I'd check yellow. And here I just need to keep green under control. Okay, but you can't, you can't keep people under control forever. And now, okay, now I did actually sort of get wrecked there. And again, green had a chance to take my queen. So actually this check on green was a mistake in my opinion. I think green should have taken here. Um, but he did not. So let's try to get in the mind of green. Obviously he's a good player. Oh, right, 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 I forgot. No, I did, I did notice this during the game, um, but it was just luck that it was, that it was there. So um, yellow was here and if green had taken then yellow, or after I move, yellow would have check, followed by taking the rook um, with a fork. So, yes, if, if yellow maintains this queen and, yellow, and green loses the rook, then green would have no chance of winning. So green didn't do that. Obviously, I didn't take the rook. I moved away. And now, basically what's happening is yellow, is, yellow and green are going to keep trying to check me. And eventually, eventually there will be a promotion here. Um, and so my king is basically just getting checked continuously. All kings basically have no way to stop themselves from being checked now. But in this case, um, well, green decided, hey, if I take this and red recaptures and yellow promotes again, there's absolutely no way then he would be able to fight both of us off. So green takes that pawn off. And now we're back to sort of a stalemate in the center. Um, at this point, I decided, well, there's no way for me to really get teamed after taking off this rook because there's only a bishop left for green uh, and a pawn. There's only a bishop left for green. And if I just put all my pieces on um, light squares, it'll be fine, right? 
Um, and still, green cannot go ahead and take this queen because if yellow is the only one with the queen left, this queen can be, you know, all of this, these four things, especially with two pawns left. So, yeah, and there, yellow got a double check, one point. Those things can add up in the end games. Um, here, I just bring the queen back. Um, yellow shouldn't want to trade queens because I would be able to promote first here. Um, takes, takes, push, 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 and I would promote. Unless green went ahead and stopped me. Um, it'd be a little tough for green to do that though because I could get my king around to his pawn pretty quickly. And um, I don't know what would happen in that particular endgame. It might just be. Well, no, it shouldn't be a draw. It should be some kind of strange endgame. Um, but yellow moves away. And this is interesting, because yellow is just going to keep checking me until green gets queen. And here, green was definitely back in the game. No question. Um, protected the king. Um, I can't take this, because then yellow will win. So I did make this kind of move. And now, of course, yellow can't take me because he's pinned. But if yellow takes this green, then, of course, I will go ahead and take here. And what yellow should have done was just back it up. And then we're back again to just moving around until something happens. Um, extremely, extremely close game. Um, but yellow at this point did decide to take that green queen. And, well, that was all she wrote. Um, yellow did explain after the game. He got a bit bored and went for second. Um, I understand that, but I just think if you're gonna be play, if you're gonna be interested in the game and be playing the game, you should just play it, right? Um, okay. So then, obviously, if you're the only one left with the queen, uh, there wasn't much the other players could do, and so I guess we had a little bit of a bad sport at the end, but really. Um, it was 90-some 90, 90 moves already. The game could have lasted another 50 moves until someone made a mistake and lost a queen. Or two players just decided to finally gang up somehow in a way that would be favorable. So that they could both have a, um, a decent 1v1 afterward. But as it happened, uh, Yellow didn't want that. He just wanted to get the second and call it a day, um, which really does not benefit him too much. As you can see, it's uh, plus 0 0.6, and for Green, it was minus 0 0.9. So the difference they were fighting over was not much, not much difference between second and third. So, you know, in that case, you really should just play to four um, first. But, um, yeah, it was getting to be quite a long game. So... Um, in the end, it was a high quality game by all four players, even Blue played well, um, but it turned out the attack on him was a little too strong. Uh, Pump you enjoyed the game, and uh, I'll keep trying to bring you some high level games as they get played. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested in me covering the upcoming uh, 2v2 championship. And um, hope you all have a great day. See ya.